let us evaluate some properties. In test, charts and tables can be found in the property tables module. I'm already logged in at the thermofluids.net website. So let's switch to the property tables. And you notice that at the top level, there are these four different tabs. These are tables A through E, F through K. And he, here you'll find some videos in the future, even more. Uh, and finally, there, are, there is the discussion block. What you do there, if you see any problem or you, you notice anything that is not correct, you can come here and make a post. Immediately, we'll correct the tables if there is any mistake found. As usual, in every page, you will see this help icon, and that brings up quick, quick help for this particular page. These tables are organized the same way as, the, as in the textbook available from uh, Amazon. And if you go to the publication, you'll find all the details of the book. It's called Thermodynamics and Interactive Approach. OK, let's get back to tables now. So you will notice that the rows are, each row is connected in that sense that table A means a cell model uh, is in this row. For first, every cell is kind of a link. If you click on the table cell, it will give you the description what an SL model is. It handles solid and liquids. Clicking again closes that. Uh, that is true for all these models. So you can click on PC model. It will explain what is the phase change model. And this row has a number of fluids, obviously, because that's a very important model. Sometimes, say, for instance, in RG model, uh, we use a lot of charts. Uh, this is the compressibility chart that comes out here as you click the chart for the RG model. So let's see how we open up a table, interpolate, and then verify the result. Uh, so for instance, suppose we cho choose to find the state of superheated vapor of H2O. So we go to PC model, steam with H2O, and click on superheated H2O table. It comes here, and if you can go to English or SI units as you please. And then you can find just in, the, in a textbook, the tables organized according to pressure. Just suppose, just suppose for the sake of argument that we have a state, uh, what is given to us is pressure equals, oops. What is given to us is pressure equals, let's say 4.2, 4.2 MPA. And let's say we pick a temperature also something in between. Temperature equals, let's say 325. Notice we have a pressure of 4 MPA and pressure of 4.5 MPA, and we have temperature of 325. We have temperature of 300 and 350. So obviously, if we want to find, let's say the question is find enthalpy. Obviously, enthalpy is going to be somewhere between these two numbers and these two numbers. This is known as a bilinear interpolation, which may take quite some time. But if we think intelligently, 4.2 is closer to this table. So these two numbers, 2960 and 2943, I'll say these two numbers will give us something like 2950, uh, let's say, or 55, I'll say, 2955, just guessing that a number closer to this number. Similarly, 3092 is, so this is the number for 300. And number for 350 is 3092 and 3080. So let's pick a number 3085, uh, let's say. And then we know that temperature we want is 325, which is kind of in between the two. I could take a calculator and find an average. Uh, I will not spend so much time on that. So again, even this average I'm going to eyeball, uh, I will say it will be about, uh, it is in between the two number, let's say 3010 zero, zero, zero or something. So let's go with this value as our guess of enthalpy. 
3010. So let's see if if we saved all that time, let's verify this using a test calc. So let's get rid of all this writing here. So how do you verify this calculation? We get, go back here, you'll notice that in the second column, the PC test step appears, we just click there. And here, we, here comes the test calc where we can just enter the number 4.2 MPA and the temperature was I believe 325 Celsius. And the enthalpy has been calculated here, 3020. So uh, even though we kind of eyeballed it, uh, uh, the answer is quite close percent-wise. And once you do that a number of times, you'll get used to that so much that you'll save a lot of time when you're forced to find a number by interpolation. I call that guesstimate. Guesstimating a number saves you a lot of time. Uh, what other features are there? So you click again, obviously then the test calc and, and the table will disappear when you click on this again. Uh, the animation link brings up relevant elevation animation explaining uh, how properties of this particular class of fluid changes with temperature and pressure uh, and also in table f through k uh, you will find in addition to the standard tables and charts there is also uh, table j an equation sheet for frequently used in thermodynamics uh, generally, these equations are quite handy. Whenever you want to solve a problem manually, uh, many of these equations are used. And finally, uh, table K has the errata sheet, uh, which lists every mistake that has been found to date in the textbook I, I talked about in the beginning, uh, the textbook Thermodynamics and Interactive Approach. So once again, it's a very short uh, introduction to evaluation of properties one of the most important things in thermodynamics if you make one mistake in evaluating a property you know there's a chain effect of that in a, in a in a in a long solution so it's always a good idea that instead of spending a lot of time on interpolation guessing any an intelligent intelligently guessing a value from the table and then using the test app to verify uh, that how good is your estimate and you improve in this manner very fast uh, I'll stop here.